on everybody, Paul Kenny here from Marino's Athletic Performance and today we're going to be talking about acceleration. Alright, when we're talking sprinting, everyone again, myself included, loves to talk about max velocity. We love to talk about how Henry Ruggs ran 23 miles per hour at the NFL Combine. But, realistically in sports, we accelerate without hitting top speed 95% of the time. And if we're talking about sports like basketball or volleyball or small area games, that is going to be purely acceleration based. When we want to improve acceleration, there are two things we have to look at. One, vertical strength. Two, body positioning. Okay? If you don't have those two qualities, I don't care how much technique work you do, you're never going to be as fast as you possibly can. All right? So, when you look at the angle of a runner, now do not mind my stick figure drawing. Upright, this is our athlete right here with a high knee posture, okay? Take that angle of the body, that vertical angle, and all I wanna see you do is tip it forward to approximately a 45 degree angle, all right? When you tip the body forward to that 45 degree angle, what happens is the vertical force component of the down foot is now not going down, it's actually pushing back. Okay, when you accelerate, you need to push the floor down and you need to push back behind you. Okay, force down, push back. That's the only way you're going to move forward. Okay, so when you're doing a wall drill, as you see in the series before you, or um, you may have seen online somewhere, the idea behind the wall drill is essentially if your wall is right here and say our athlete has their arms up against the wall. They are now in a power position. They are putting force, let's get rid of the tall stick figure. They are putting force in this direction, which is going to prepare the body to move forward. The reason vertical strength is important. Have you ever seen that 10, 11, 12 year old that grew quite a bit? And he or she is trying to stay low and accelerate out. But the first thing they do is pop up. The reason is vertical strength plays a big role in having the ability to put your body in front of your feet. All right, I'll say that again. Vertical strength helps you get into this position where your body and your head are in front of your legs and your feet. If you do not have vertical strength, what this athlete will do is the athlete will be in this power position, but the first movement they're going to do is to go upwards to get their center of mass below their body and head. There is no coaching that you can do to get somebody out of that position. It's just where they're strong. I was working with a football athlete the other day. He grew probably about six inches, put on about 30 pounds in the last year, year and a half. Okay, big kid. He wasn't accelerating out like I wanted to see. We're trying to work on his 40 yard starts. He wasn't getting to that spot, but it's not his fault. He's not strong enough. And actually, if he tries to glide out, kind of like take off like a plane. He rounds his back and just stays low in this posture. So he's staying low in his head. He's listening to my words. But the problem is he's not creating a forceful angle. If this athlete didn't pop up and wanted to take off, what you'll see is their second step. You'll have this great angle right here of the lower half. Okay? But then you're going to see this. All right, now you just have an athlete leaning and rounding his back. How is force going to move from the foot through the body? Where is it getting lost? Right where the lean is happening. This athlete putting force on the ground here, boom, they're taking off. All right, 45 degree angle, wall drills. That's working on the body position, but don't forget that vertical strength is going to allow us to get our body in front of our feet. And the last bit of this, one of the most important parts is stiffness. As athletes, we are trying to take force from the foot and send it through the entire body. If we cannot create a stiff core, if we don't have stiff joints in our knees, hips, and ankles, and we leak or we hit that ground and instead of popping that ground, we're actually oozing into it you're not going to be forceful or fast moving forward, okay? You have to have the ability to be strong enough to get to this position, but also elastic and stiff through the body. 
The muscles need to be fast. You need to produce force in as minimal time as possible. This is a very effective drill to teach wall positioning and stiffness. But remember, if you don't apply it when you're running to your 20 meter sprints, to your 10 yard sprints, etc., you're not going to do it on the field. So I see football players all the time or baseball players that work on these wall drills, but if you never apply it and actually use those mechanical teachings to get better at your running or in your sport, it's not just going to carry over. So what I did with my athletes is I put the wall drills 10 minutes before their speed drills. Their max velocity or max speed days where they're doing 20, 30 meter, 40 meter runs, that is where I put the wall drills beforehand because I want to see them feel that posture. Feel that angle, feel that 45, so that when that foot hits that ground and you're loading that ankle, you're loading those calf muscles eccentrically and getting them ready to push off, then you get to the turf, you get to the track, and you're moving and your body feels great. So again, guys, acceleration. It's a lot of mechanics, requires a good amount of strength. The body needs to be stiff if we want that force to travel from the foot, through the body, through the head, and in the direction we want to go. I'm Paul Kenny. And this was great talking to you today. Thanks for stopping by.